synthesizers, dick man. How come we're climbing this towering skyscraper? We must get to the Camp Midnight studio, old chum. Ah. Um, excuse me, let me ask you, what are you guys doing out here? I mean, what is this, the dyslexic duo? Do not fear, good citizen. Go about your business. My business? So I got the flying Willendas outside in my conversation pit. When I moved into this building, it was a no-climbing apartment. Look, I've got Satchel asleep in here. Do you mind? Be at ease. We shall not disturb the toddler. Oh, really? Well, in that case, tell you what, you want to come inside and maybe, uh, you know, mispronounce allegorical and didacticism? Or, in your case, Dick, how about thee, that, and I? Holy hand and her sisters, Dick, man! It's funny, man! Woody Allen! Well, actually, it's interesting you should mention that. I'm sort of moving in a new direction. My, my next film is a darkly serious look at urban angst, sort of in the style of Ingmar Fellini. Poor demented fool. Remember September? I didn't like that one. I like his funnier old ones better, don't yeah. you? Bananas, Wait a minute. Yeah. stuff like that. I think that. you got it yeah. wrong, much, guys. Much funnier. Much funnier. Funnier. I, I don't like know. Yeah, yeah Annie Hall was good. That was a real... response that was. Thank you very much and welcome to Camp Midnight, the hottest little Friday night show done uh, on the USA Network in a small studio on Van Nuys Boulevard. Okay, well that doesn't bring it down too, too slow for you. Hey, Scooter Peach in the band. Say hello to Scooter. Scooter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. I'm so excited. Uh, we have finally received, we've talked about it, and we received uh, a fax message that uh, I want to share with you, Scoop. That's worth some applause. Yeah, uh -huh. a fax machine. Yeah, we, yeah, we've got a fax machine here. This says, this, was, this came to us from uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Fax to us on our fax machine. It says, to the guy from the Midwest who has that new show on USA Network, greetings from Worcester, Massachusetts. Hello, Worcester. How the heck are you? This is a city nearly as unknown as you are. Talking about me, which is fine. Accidentally tuned in your show last night, and then <laughs> the channel knob broke. But since all I could do was watch USA Network, I did pretty good show, nice set. Okay. <laughs> Low expectations up in Wooster, I can tell you that. Seriously, I like the show. It kind of reminds me of the Bob Newhart show that he does up in Vermont. Also, your voice is a little like David Letterman's, isn't that nice? Although your band leader is better looking than his. I think. Oh! Oh! Well, that was our one goal. We searched and searched and searched until we found someone better looking than Paul Schaefer, and I think we've done it with Scooter Peach, by golly. If you read this on the air, sorry, we can't do that. Please give your warmest greetings to Kyle Hepperstall, your number one fan here in Wooster, Wooster, and remember, uh, this is signed by Bob, a highly sophisticated, intelligent, non-yuppie fan in what, Wooster? Was, I can't say that. I'm not even going to try. In central Massachusetts. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Worcester. And uh, thank you, everybody. Mm. Well, this is a very special program tonight because Valentine's Day is coming up before too long. And in honor of the love and warmth that is in the air at Valentine's Day, we put together a little part of our program tonight, and help me out here, Scooter, called The Cupid Connection. That's right. We've selected at random three individuals and a lovely lady from our studio audience before this show to play The Cupid Connection for us tonight. You, the audience, will be selecting in a very special manner here very shortly which of these lucky young uh, gentlemen will be best suited to meet and go out and have a romantic <laughs> night with our lovely, lovely lady. Matter of fact, let's meet our lady right now if we can and let me tell you about her. She's 18 years old, she's a student, and currently uh, single. So say hello to Debbie Dodge. Come on out, Debbie. <laughs> Debbie, thank you. 
Well, Debbie, I think you can feel the romance in the air here on the Camp Midnight set, can't you? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Debbie Dodge. Well, let me ask you just a couple of quick questions. Okay. What do you see as the perfect date? How would you describe that? Uh, someone who's, I guess, is easy to get along with and pretty nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have a lot of trouble with guys hitting on you, trying to pick you up all the time? Well, I go out a lot of the time with just girls. My girlfriends and I just go mm -hmm. out like dancing and stuff. So if a guy sees, you know, girls without a guy, I guess they come up with them yeah. a lot. <laughs> All right, good. What's the one thing that tells you? What's that little trigger that goes off inside Debbie Dodge that says, this guy is for me? I don't know. It's got to happen, I guess. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, huh? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Tonight may be your special night here on the Cupid Connection. All right. I tell you what, why don't we do this? Why don't we meet, ladies and gentlemen, our three lucky guys who have been selected from our studio audience. And Debbie, let's take a look at these guys, okay? First off, I'd like for you to say hello to... Ooh, thank you, Ted Nugent. Um, <laughs> The first thing I'd like you to do is say hello to our first gentleman, Scott Spangler. Scott is 28 years old, works as an engineer, and he enjoys golfing. Scott will tell us about his experience with blind dates. Her friend was slightly overweight. I asked her how much is slightly, 250 pounds, and she said, yeah. <laughs> Scott Spangler, Debbie. All right, let's take a look at our contestant number two now, our contestant uh, for your second choice in consideration. His name is Rich Fugate. He's 25 years old, he is a student, and he enjoys skiing. Rich tells us what he likes in a girl. What I really like in a girl is intelligence. Uh, a girl whose IQ matches her shoe size just doesn't do anything for me. But what I... <laughs> we couldn't take him on from there. Rich Fugate, Debbie. Our third choice is Bup Cumston. Bup is a... Please, let's... Bup is a 25-year-old uh, fella. He's a tool salesman from Sam Dimas, California. He enjoys gardening, clay pots, and toast. And he has an interesting theory on why women are attracted to him. Well, see, the thing is I have this thing called the, uh, the Bup effect, which is that um, women basically act repulsed uh, to me because they really uh, are, are completely desirous of the uh, Bup essence. <laughs> It's a pitter-patter right now as we have looked at our three uh, lucky contestants. Let's go to our studio audience now and vote. Uh, we, will, we will again show the three candidates for you. If you would show us with your applause, please. First off, of course, is Scott. All right, Scott. There's Scott. Here is Rich. Rich. And here is Buff. Working his way out here to the uh, front of the studio, I want to congratulate uh, this audience on making a selection, and we're going to uh, talk to Buff here in a moment and send you on a very special romantic date that you'll be having here on the Cupid Connection. Here he is, Buff, come. Have a seat. Buff, yeah, come on in, have a chair. Buff, say hello to Debbie. Debbie, say hello to Buff. All right, there you go. Hi, Debbie. And as you know, folks, uh, here on the Cupid Connection, we have lined up outside our door on Van Nuys Boulevard, the Camp Midnight Limousine, which will be whisking you off to a very chic restaurant called Shea Scooter, uh, which is not too, uh, too far away here. We are going to be able to... We're going to be able to monitor what goes on off and on throughout the show and check in on your progress and just see how this uh, little lovebird thing is coming out. Good luck to both of you. May love strike you very hard wherever you want it to strike you. And let's head them out the door. There they go. Thank you. All right, there they go out the door towards Van Nuys. No, here. here. Bup, uh, looks like he's going to grab the... Well, no, the door was open. Hi. There's the Camp Midnight limousine. Oh, after you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Kind sir. Appreciate it. All right. Hey, this is great. Oh, my goodness. Whisking away. This is terrific, man. We're being To our lovely... There it goes. All right. Don the Cupid Connection. And we'll see what happens to our lovebirds as we check in with them again here later in the program on the Cupid Connection. Hey, uh, Robin, Bert Ward from Batman coming up in a moment. We'll be back in two and two.
USA Network, Dick Wilson, your host for the evening. Still to come tonight, uh, Bert Ward, Lois Brumfield, Paul Wilson will be with us, Freddie Wellman, Joy Hussein, and the, uh, the Broken Homes group also. And right now, though, whenever I come back from seeing a great lineup of commercials like that on the USA Network, I'm thinking of food. What do you think, huh? Have a little food, everybody? All right. Tonight, we're dialing up. We are dialing up two guys from Italy. It's a pizza shop over in North Hollywood. And let's just order, you're all into pizza, aren't you? Huh? Yeah! I don't think anyone has ever said no to a pizza. Let's see if we can uh, ring it up here. Two guys from Italy and North Hollywood. There's two rings. We'll add another $2 and get back to our movie. Uh, it's a busy place, so they're, uh, hopefully they'll be able to find their way over here for us. We'll let it ring one more time, and if they don't answer, I'll call them back in the commercial and get your individual orders for pizza. All right, let me do that. I'll tell you what, I'll call him in just a moment because I want to get our next special guest on. I'm going to order up, uh, you know, a, a plain, a pepperoni, onions, peppers, meatballs, mushrooms, call it out. Okay. We'll do it from two guys from Italy. We'll get, we'll, we'll get it going here, and I'll call him when the commercial comes back on again. Because right now, I'd like to bring out a very special person. Our first guest tonight is the only person you could possibly think of if I said, holy ravioli Batman. Now Robin the Boy Wonder has grown up, and he's here with us this evening. Please welcome Bert Ward. <laughs> Yeah, we're excited to have you on. Thanks for coming on Camp Hey, Midnight. it's great to be here. I mean, this is a hot new show. I mean, everybody's yeah. got to make this show. Well, I hope, I hope so, and we're glad that you got right <laughs> in here in the front of the line. Thank you. You know, I, I was so excited when I read over you. I get all these things, folks, uh, to read about people, and I said, well, Burt Ward, by golly, he was Robin, and, and that was a long time ago, and, but he's done so many other things, and we're going to get to him here in just a minute. Uh, but I want to ask you, 23 years ago, Batman, 23, how time flies, huh? Uh, yes, when, especially when you're having fun, climbing walls. <laughs> getting tortured every week, Golly. still managing to survive. <laughs> Wait, 23 years ago you started, how many shows did you do at Batman? Uh, we did 120 episodes, that was twice a week, the equivalent of five years of production done over a two and a half year period. We only had two hiatuses, so one of them I did a play, and the other one, I was up for a film over 20th Century Fox, but unfortunately got turned down. Studio didn't want me to do anything else but Batman. Oh. Film turned out pretty good, too. It was called The Graduate. Oh, The Graduate. Oh. oh. Don't worry about totally it. Holy letdown. Yeah, huh? I can't even find it. <laughs> yeah, totally letdown. <laughs> Uh, I can't even find it at the rental place anymore, so don't worry about the graduate. You know, there were thousands of people who, gra who were auditioned for Robin, yeah. and you won it. Right. What did they make you do when you went in for the audition, or what did you do that won it for you, you think? Well, I actually, I had three auditions. One mm -hmm. is, uh, is the character of uh, Dick Grayson, which was the alter identity of uh, Robin, mm -hmm. uh, and that was just straight dialogue. Another one I had as Robin in the costume. And the third one, I had, they wanted someone very athletic, and I'm a black belt in karate, so I did some stuff. I broke a brick with my hand. I broke a board <laughs> over my head. I mean, you know, really intelligent things, but they were impressed. They liked it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, a new Batman feature film is coming out. Yeah. Your thoughts as the, the, the Batman kingpin, what do you think about the new Batman movie? Well, let me just say this. I understand they're doing it in a different style. I understand yeah. that Batman uh, is portrayed as an ex-alcoholic and that it's extremely violent. And that's not my idea of uh, a role model for kids. In fact, it kind of destroys the last role model for kids. So I'm a little upset about that. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe again, I'm wrong and who, who'll know. You know, I, I, I wish them the best. At the same time, I can't. My orientation is for kids. And so I like to do stuff that elevates people, not the stuff that brings people down. You know, uh, go good. Yeah. <laughs> You know, speaking of kids, let's just get right onto that subject right now, because yeah. you've gone above and beyond the call of duty with this. Tell us about what you're doing for kids right now. Well, because I've traveled all over the world, and especially in the United States, making personal appearances, and it's really sad, but uh, children, there's a lot of abused children, a lot of times children abuse other children. We have more crime in America than ever today, Dick, more violence, more corruption to the highest levels of government. And I wanted to make a contribution to our country, and I, I created a program with top psychologists called the Early Bird Learning Program, mm -hmm. whose purpose is to teach children between the ages of two and eight social values like honesty, truthfulness, sharing, caring, to teach children good health and safety rules, and to 
teach them critical thinking skills, decision making. This program has never been anything like this before in America, nor anywhere else that I'm aware of. So put together with some of the top people in the world, we put this together to try to change a con our country for the better, to try to have a place that's safe for us to be able to go out at night, to be able to go to a movie theater and drop your child. But we don't have that anymore in America. And my idea is let's teach children values while they're young, and then maybe they'll demonstrate those as adults. All right, I think we have a clip, yeah. Brad, do we have a clip of that? Okay. Bert, uh, we're, let's show a clip of the uh, of the early bird learning uh, Wonderful. system. Okay, let's take a look at it. You can kind of see how what the kids are seeing in the, in the school. Yes. Right. Yup. It smells very strange. I hope you can all learn what gas smells like. So if you ever smell something strange, you tell mom or dad. In fact, children are sometimes better at smelling things than grown-ups. Grown-ups may have bigger noses, but yours are better. And to tell you a secret. Yours are also cuter. <laughs> All right. Good. You know, Dick, what, what's nice is when you capture children's attention, because they have short attention spans at that age. You capture attention, then you teach. Yeah. And that's our whole concept. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you for doing that. I mean, you, uh, how, what, how did you come up with this idea to start doing this? The personal appearances across the country for yeah. all these years, and I've met so many kids. I've actually had 7,000 personal appearances, right at 7,000. And I've handed out almost, uh, almost 5 million autographed pictures over the last 20 years. Mm. So I've had a chance to meet probably more people than even politicians do. Yeah, well, good luck on that. Thank yeah. you. The, these are autographed pictures of you as uh, Robin? When I make or, my personal yeah. appearances, good. yes. Okay. I, I wanted to ask you one other Robin question, because I know that there are the, the comic books... Right. had a call in or a vote in and they killed Robin off. Mm -hmm. Your feelings please? Well there was a soft drink company a couple years ago that changed their soft drink and all they did was end up selling more soft drinks and maybe somebody's trying to sell more comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Alright there's one other thing. This uh, Not only is he the boy wonder but he's the man wonder also. Um, the normal person reads 200 words per minute with 40 percent comprehension. Bert tell us how many you read. Well, I studied for three and a half years, and I got my speed up to 30,000 words a minute with 90% comprehension. Oh, yeah. How many pages is that? I mean, what is that? Well, give me a, uh, give me a sample. When I was at UCLA, I, I think I read uh, War and Peace, uh, 1,442 pages in 45 minutes. And oh. I got lucky. I got an A on an essay oh, final the next day. Gosh. I do good to get through the Sunday paper yeah. in, a, in the course of a day. The well, it's really section. serious business when you read like that at that speed because you're looking for who, what, why, when, and where. Yeah. You do indented reading, space reading, and, you know, you, you go, it's business. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not for pleasure, it's for business. Well, that's know? incredible. All right. Well, what, how about movies? You got some movie stuff going Yeah, on. I just finished two films in the last six months. Uh, one of them is called Kill Crazy. It's uh, about an ex-Vietnam War veteran who suffers through the, the horrors of having been in war. And uh, that one will be out this summer. And another one I just finished about a week ago is called StarQuest. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of set in the 22nd century where a genetic engineer falls in love with a star woman. Uh, it's exciting for me because this is the first time in my career that my name was above the title of the film. So uh oh, I really yeah. Like All right, yeah. Holy ego boost. <laughs> Well, you're a busy guy. What do you do when you're at home and you want to relax and take it easy? What do you do? Well, uh, this has been a kind of an off week for me. I've done four television shows this week mm -hmm. and uh, a national uh, Canada broadcast. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I like to go um, scuba diving and uh, I like to play tennis and I like to go horseback riding. And I'm very into sports. I just wish I had a little more time to do them. Well, uh, Bert, here's a small book called These Are the Russians. Would you read this real quick? And after our commercial break, tell me about it, okay? I don't have time to read it. Bert Ward. Also, we want you to sign and bite a cup. Oh, all right. All right, there you go, okay? We'll be back with Lois Bromfield in just a moment. Romance is in the air there at our special Cupid Connection couple as they're trying that date out that we set them with earlier in the show. We'll check back in with them a little bit later in the program. But right now in the program, one thing we'd like to do is something that has become just, it's almost foaming at the mouth in its popularity, and that is things that sound dirty but really aren't. Yeah. Yeah. We've, uh, we've asked for people from all over America to send us on mail or fax those things that sound dirty but really aren't and we have three we'd like to share with you here tonight first off from fresno california david luft sent us one in and he has suggested beef jerky 
Okay. Ah, good job, David. That's very nice. From Northville, Michigan, uh, Marilyn Kiefer writes in. Marilyn sends in this very special one, and it is Fort Dix. <laughs> Now, you may wonder, of course, where we get a picture of Fort Dix, and by golly, you can just look in your uh, monthly issue of Forts Illustrated. There it is right there. And uh, I'm looking forward to that swimsuit edition will be out. Hey, look at the Quonset huts on those babies. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, our third, things that sound dirty but really aren't, was sent in by our own staff, and they have nominated our very own regular performer that we're so proud of, Carolyn Schlitt. Carolyn, how are you? Now that certainly is. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Caroline Schlitt. Okay. That really does sound dirty, Caroline. Um, now you're a young actress out here in Hollywood. Uh, why? Why haven't you got a stage name? Actually, Dick, Caroline Schlitt is my stage name. My real name is Caroline Fluck. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Caroline. Folks, I know you have laying around the house there this evening things that sound dirty and you're wondering, Dick, what do I do with them? Here's what you do with them. Send it to us in care of Camp Midnight, Post Office Box 189. We're in Hollywood, California, and will be until the big one comes along, 978. <laughs> or fax us this stuff, and it's area code 818-843-FAXS, the wonderful fax machine. And if you do send it, and we do use it on the air, you'll be receiving an 8x10 of Peter O'Toole. So. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We'll cut this out of the show so you won't see it really on the air, okay? Re really, guys, you'll cut it out. Peter O'Toole. There it is. Okay. All right, Peter. <laughs> That's a real fun. Uh, send those to us. Our next guest, let's get her out here because she's waiting back there and she's waited for forever and, and, and we want to get her out here for her. She's a very funny comic. And she can be seen all over this great country of ours as well as the Las Vegas Strip time and time again. Please give a warm... Camp Midnight, howdy high to Lois Bromfield. Oh, boy. Hi. Okay. <laughs> oh. Well, we're having the best time, aren't we? My God. Sorry. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'll tell you, I had a great time driving here. I had a real good time driving here. It was nice. Um, I saw a woman in, the, in a car next to me who had very bad PMS. Very bad. She was sitting in the back seat going, <laughs> She was licking the windows, and she had a little collar on. Kids were throwing biscuits at her. It was bad. So. <laughs> Not a pretty story, but one that needs to be told. So. So. So I'm a blonde, which is kind of frightening. It's very frightening. Yeah, yeah, I'm a natural blonde too. Yeah, yeah, with a big black line down here, so. You know, I'm Canadian originally, which is kind of scary because I was afraid of coming to California and becoming one of those California blondes. You know, the type of the little hole in the back of the neck with the air blowing through, you know. Yeah, it's bad. I don't know, when I first moved here, I was, very, I was very scared, though, because I'll never forget the first time I saw a California beauty contest. It was frightening. They had the 10 gals up there, you know, and they were sharing a brain. And um, <laughs> it was kind of scary, but you know how they always ask them questions, get to know their personalities? Well, this one gal was perfect California material. You know, she was 18 years old. She had long blonde hair, very long blonde hair, but like out windows and under cars, miles away. And she was great. She had the IQ of a donut, and she felt good about herself. But she was classic. They said to her, let's get to know you a little bit. And she was great. And they sh said, talk to us a little bit about yourself. And she went, um, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. <laughs> I'm really, 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 really excited. <laughs> okay. And um, I hope I win. Okay, 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 okay. And they had to smack her. <laughs> and then they got to her skill testing question, okay? Very exciting, very serious moment. There's a drum roll. <laughs> the MC turned to her and he said, What is the capital of Wyoming? Dead seriously, she went, 
Okay, okay, um, okay, okay. I know the answer, okay, okay. The capital of Wyoming is W, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, so she won. She won. And, um, oh, I don't know. No, us blondes are all right. What can I say? I don't know. I'm getting kind of older now. I'm, I'm 33 years old, which is kind of exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. Well, it's bad because they say when you turn 30, you start to reach your sexual peak. <laughs> well, I don't know who they are, but I'm going to hurt them when I find them. I'll tell you that. <laughs> You know, you're reaching your sexual peak at the same time your car insurance goes down. <laughs> Which I think is kind of dangerous when you're on edge, you know. <laughs> and it's been a while. And you're behind the wheel, you know. <laughs> you see a nice looking guy crossing the pedestrian walk. I'm gonna get him, he's mine! <laughs> Over the hood, come on, pal! And then you gotta drive past high schools to find guys in their sexual peak, so. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Come on, get your books, get in. Someday you'll be driving, yeah. Oh, it's bad. I just broke up with a guy after like three years we were together, which is like a, yeah. Yeah, all right. She's unhappy, all right. She's bummed out. No, we broke up, and uh, we were together for three years, like I said, and we broke up, my friends treated me very strangely. You know, I don't know about you people out there, but when you break up, your friends treat you real pathetically. They really do. They treat you like a dog. They kind of do. My friend called me up, you know, and she said, Hi, Lois. How you doing? Are you okay? You okay? Do you want to go out? Do you want to go? Yeah? Come on. Come on. Come on. We're going in the car. You can put your head out the window. Well, let me get my collar and leash. I don't know, but I still get street hassled, which is kind of a compliment in a way, you know? I mean, if you're getting to be an older gal and you still get whistled at, it's kind of neat and it's kind of annoying, but I'll never forget the first time I got street hassled in Hollywood. It was great. It was classic. Car drives by with about five guys in the car, and I'm walking along on the street because <laughs> that's the kind of gal I am. And, um, <laughs> and I'm walking, and I hear this from a speeding car. <laughs> Woo! Ow! Hey, woo, hey, woo! Woo, 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 ow, ow, ow! All right, hey, woo, 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 ow! All right, hey, Blondie, where are you going? What are you doing? Hey, woo, hey, woo, hey, woo, hey, woo! Woo, 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 ow! And this guy thinks you're gonna date him? <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys are very sweet. you in our audience here tonight, huh? I know, and they're all at their peak, and that's Ooh, important. Yeah. <laughs> we loaded the place with guys at their peak. Good to Good. meet you. Thanks for coming on Camp Midnight. Yeah, well, I love it. Well, we I didn't get a here. chance to talk right before the show, so tell me everything about yourself in the last 33 years in about 30 seconds here. Yeah, well, hey. I'm a lovely woman, uh -huh. and... Um, oh, yeah. And what, what's this? You're from Canada. Why are there... Yeah. What is it about Canada that we get so many funny people out of there? Well, because it's very boring, and all they do is drink beer, chain smoke, and try to get a green card to come here. <laughs> no, I, um... It's a, Canada's actually a great place, and I started doing comedy in Canada, what, 11 years ago now, a long time ago. And, um, I don't know, it's just you can't, uh, there's no clubs. There's not very many clubs in Canada yeah, to work at. Yeah. And down here in California, there's lots of clubs, and uh, they put up with us, so... Were you really afraid the first time you came to Los Angeles? Was it a scary situation for you? No, I wasn't afraid. Actually, the thing I was most afraid of were some of the men in Hollywood, because they're very slick, you know, yeah. very slick guys. The kind of guys who wear their shirts with the hair attached, so I was kind of scared <laughs> of that. <laughs> it all comes off. It's all one piece. The Rolex, the shirt, it's all there. But, uh, <laughs> it's fun. But actually, no. No, I, I was not afraid, yeah. really. So what, what kind of fun things are you up to now? What's happening in the... Well, right now, um, I did a, a video about a couple of years ago called Sorority Girls from Hell. I've heard of that. Tell us yeah. about this now. Well, it's a charming title. Yeah. And um, 
It's just a video about college girls and about this one girl named Irma who goes crazy and kills them all. It's a charming uh, video. And uh, <laughs> actually, though, it's gotten a very good following. It's really nice. A lot did of you go to like uh, Did you, you do college? Did you do college? Can you use it? Did you do? Feel free. Yeah. Did you do some sorority? Did you know sororities? You take this from real life people? No, I did not. I made it all up. I invented it. I never made it to college. I'm proud to say that on television. Oh well. <laughs> I'm uh, no education. Good luck in That's the future. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I did not make it to college. Yeah. No. No, Lois, I, did not. I wish you would please make it back to Camp Midnight sometime. Can you do that for Sure, us? I will. All right. And well, you know what? I will because right across the street is the bingo hall that I go to every oh, Wednesday. Oh, good. Yeah. Wonderful. I love that. Yeah. Bingo. That's what we love about Van Nuys. Yeah. Would you, uh, we need you to B and S, bite and sign a cup for us, okay? Oh, bite the cup? Just put a little dental impression so we can always identify it. Just, uh, you mean your, yeah, just put your teeth in there. There you go. Okay. And now, Very feminine. Thank you. <laughs> sign it up for us. Hi. On Friday night. Thanks, Scooter. Nice music. Uh, I'd like at this moment to check in on our Cupid Connection, uh, our lovely couple that started our evening out that you, our studio audience, chose and sent out on a romantic date here uh, for Valentine's Day. Let's go back. Is that microwave system set up, uh, Brad, or we can go to the, re uh, the restaurant? You got it, big guy. All right, let's take a look right now and see. Let's take a look and see. Where are they? Where are those folks? Here they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean it looks like they're having a romantic a, time. Let's listen in. A terrific time as you're filet mignon. And I mean, this is best friend. Uh, no. But after it's very good. Speaking of which, the filet mignon, huh? Yeah. A flaming yawn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, what? Um, oh, I gotta tell you something. I having a nice time? Hmm? Got your nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, oh, look. It's. It's, it's Mr. Swordfish. You know Mr. Swordfish? Remember that, those cartoons where you Mr. Swordfish finding on the thing. And then he went over the thing. And then Mr. Swordfish went through the flaming gun and found in the salad a mermaid. Hmm? You know, I'll tell you something. When I was a kid, I remember, um, you know, I really enjoyed myself. Did you enjoy, do we eat like truly or anything like that? Or it's, cause I remember, when, this is really funny, because I remember, <coughs> Okay. Food's delicious. Okay, I don't think I don't think we want to hear that story from Bob. Uh, but it looks like a romantic evening. It looks like a very romantic evening going on, and we'll check in with them later on our Cupid Connection to see just if love strikes here tonight. Well, uh, during a, an earlier commercial, I did uh, get the two guys from uh, from Italy Pizza Place on the phone. They were real busy, so busy serving up all the great pizzas, and they got the food over here real quick. And it's time to eat. Yeah. I'll tell you what, let's just take a look and see who we have here. What do we have? Let's show, uh, 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 we ordered up a variety of kinds here. We got wonderful looking pizza. Hold this up. This is the, uh, there you go. Here we go. Here's the, uh, the vegetarian one, you Californians. No pushing and shoving, okay. Here's our mushroom, and we got a lovely cheese pizza, and looks like a nice sausage one over here also. So it's good eaten by all. Come on up, let's have a little bite, okay? Yeah, work your way on up here. And while we do that, we have uh, our network, just, yeah, right in front of me, it's no problem. It's an inexpensive show. No, really, it's no problem. Um, while we're eating, let's, let's enjoy our network stipulation video. Remember, USA Network makes us do this. Um, so it's a bit risky this week. We're going to go out on the limb now and saddle up with a country tune from Hank Williams Jr. entitled Young Country. Let's do it on Cat Midnight. Yeah. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Ain't no more good old country music, Jim. Try to read a Santa Fe for a little song, Bean. Mm. That's right. Read a little Santa Fe for a little song, my lord. Triple crown. Whatever happened to a good old country music? Bean Madden Country. Stars in that thing? Good going, Hank Williams Jr. Hey, Paul Wilson's coming up from It's the Gary Shandling Show in just a moment. Stay with us on Camp Midnight. Spending your time 
your Friday nights with us. Uh, next week's show, got a great lineup of guests. I hope you'll join us. We've got Dana Sparks from L.A. Law, Jason Hervey from The Wonder Years. Hang, hang on just a minute. Hold it, hold it. Macadamia. Wait a minute. Uh, I don't. What's going on over here in the audience? Ma'am, ma'am, are you? is this something that you can share with the rest of the audience? <laughs> it's just me, Mrs. Fields. Oh. Debbie Fields. Uh. And I was in a studio, and I just thought I'd pass out some of my cookies to your hungry audience. Well, folks, it's Debbie Fields, a cookie lady. Come on down. Yeah. Can I have one of those cookies? Well, actually, they're all gone. Your audience ate them up. Hi, Skippy. Uh, it's Scooter. Oh, you're aggressive. That can be a hindrance. Uh, oh, we're surly. Well, guys. Stop that. How's the cookie business going? Oh, it's very good. We are opening all kinds of new branches. And uh, recently, I've been touring women's correctional facilities to tell them about me. And um, I recently met with Squeaky Fromm, and she's very... <laughs> She's very excited about the muffin line. Oh, I'll be darned. You know, how did you get started in this whole cookie thing? Oh, it's an interesting story, you know. Um, I was sitting at home one day watching television. This was after I married my husband, Randy, of course. And I was eating a cookie, and it was hard. And I said to myself, we need a soft cookie. And a dream was born. Yeah. And it's been exciting nonstop ever since. Well, you've started up your own company. It's kind of like... How we've started Camp Midnight, you know, out of out of the black and into a life. Maybe some Absolutely. tips. Do you have any tips for us? Oh, well, thank you very much. I would love to. Let's see. Um, you really have to look inside yourself. Um, <laughs> when I wanted to start my business, I said to myself, I'm not a feminist. <laughs> I'm a femininist. <laughs> what do I have as a woman to help me succeed? And I came up with the fact that I have very nice brown hair, and it worked. Um, Dick, you, you're lovably naive from what I can see. And you have nice glasses, that's good. Good, okay. Well, Go for it. Okay. I'll try it. Well, sure, thank you very much. You know, the, one, the problem I have, though, is with, like, the naysayers, the people who say no. Yeah, well, that's true. When I needed to expand my business, the loan officers told me they thought my business would fail. And I wasn't afraid to be a woman and say, stop, you're hurting me. <laughs> Needless to say, I was spontaneous and I got the money. Yeah, yeah. so po positive thinking does help there. Absolutely, always, and um, lots of cookies. <laughs> you know that, you, you, you. <laughs> Well, um, I, I know you, uh, lots of cookies can help. Now, the problem I have, I've, I've thought about buying them for my staff, but then uh, the problem is they're very health conscious. They don't want to eat that kind of junk, you know. Stop. <laughs> You're hurting me. <laughs> we use only the finest ingredients in our cookies, and we bake them in our stores daily to ensure freshness. And remember, they're heart smart, Dick. All right. Well, I, I, I'll give them a try, okay? Well, I, well, what a wonderful thing for you well, to stop you. by. Well, thank you. And yeah. remember my motto. What's if that? you chase money, you'll never catch it. But if you chase yourself, you always win. Okay? Oh, yeah, the cookie lady, Mrs. Fields. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. There she is, the cookie lady, folks, Mrs. Fields. I Oh, excuse me, uh, Joyce Davis, one of our producers here on Camp Midnight. Oh, gee, I got to do this. Um, folks, the chowder heads up in our legal department have asked me to read this for you. <clears throat> As regards the immediately preceding appearance by Debbie Fields, a.k.a. Mrs. Fields, please be advised that the said performance was entirely spurious and in no way represented the legitimate aforementioned Debbie Fields, a.k.a. Mrs. Fields, or any copyrights, patents, or licenses pertaining to her then. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, that won't know Debbie Fields, okay? You understand that? Okay. Of course you knew. Of course you knew. Yes, of course you knew. I'll tell you what, our next guest is a real live person who is actually here representing himself. Uh, our next guest has had a long career in both films and television. You've seen him in... Uh, my best friend is a vampire, also Mork and Mindy and Cheers, uh, just to name a few. But you may know him best as Leonard Smith, the Condo Association president on It's Gary Shanley's show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Paul Wilson's interview. How are you? Yeah. Oh, no wonder.
once again, Dick Wilson and Paul Wilson, no relation whatsoever no that relation. we know of. Is this right? Yeah. In fact, my name is spelled with two L's. I noticed that. How did you come up with a 2L name? Is that it, was uh, what I... Oh, I can hear myself now. Oh, that's great. It, I was born with it. Um, <laughs> and my parents considered having the second L removed, but uh, they decided it wouldn't... The risks were too... Yeah, serious. it would have been real expensive. Compared yeah. to the benefits, yeah. yeah. Well, you've been involved on the Gary Shandling show for a, a good time now. What's it like to be on this guy? It's kind of breaking new ground all the time. What's it like? <laughs> it's like being in a place where the ground is breaking all the time. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun, and, and in a sense, the show is, uh, is, is built from the ground up every week. So uh, it, it is a, a kind of, um, you know, first-time feeling. So very often we'll go and we'll read the, read the script for the week's show on Wednesday, and mm -hmm. then they'll say, um, we're going to talk for about a half an hour, and uh, you just go downstairs and wait in your dressing room, and then we'll get started. Fine. <laughs> then about three hours later, they say, okay, you can go to lunch. And... Uh, then we come back from lunch and we wait around for another hour or so and they say, uh, you can go home, be here at 11 o'clock tomorrow because they're rewriting the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of shows go through rewrites, but, uh, but this show goes through more rewrites than any show I know, including rewrites during the actual taping of the show, <sighs> which keeps it exciting yeah. and, uh, and, and scary. How many writers do you have on that show? Two. No, actually, we have... Uh, <laughs> well, Gary, of course, is a writer. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, then there's Alan Zweibel, who's the producer, who's also a writer, and there are about five or six additional writers. Yeah. So there are lots of writers. Um, and <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that... No, no, it's not true. That old saying about too many cooks spoil the broth. No, they have just the right number of cooks, and uh, and they're, they're all terrific people, and... Um, and terrific writers, and they work till three o'clock every morning. Man, oh, great! All right. Well, you, you were involved in the 25th anniversary show a while back. What was that all about? Uh, that was uh, there was actually no relation to the to the series. Mm -hmm. It was uh, an imaginary Gary's 25th anniversary. <laughs> and, uh, we beat Johnny by one year. <laughs> and, uh, it was it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, there were there were segments from past shows, like the guy who came on and said he was going to have this little concert in a farm in upstate New York. And uh, they weren't going to have any seats or anything. They were just going to have a couple of portable toilets. And they're they're going to get a couple of dozen hot dogs. And would Gary like to be the MC? And of course, he turned it down. And um, thus, Woodstock became the popular smash it was. And, <laughs> and Gary lost his chance to be famous yeah. 10 years earlier. All right, it's a great show. And it, I think it shows it's a great show. It's showing on so many networks. I, I've lost track. The, the, the show is showing where now? Well, it starts on Showtime. Yeah. And then Fox gets to run it. And it's shown on TWA and... Wait a minute, it's shown on in, TWA? In flight, yeah. In the plane? Yes. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> now, some people actually refuse to fly when the show's going to be on. <laughs> uh, but I think it's also available in shopping carts and inside matchbooks. Yeah, and, I think so. Especially marked boxes of Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's turn the page here for just a moment. You do a lot you of improv stuff. Right? You yeah, I, yeah, actually, right? actually, I do. Yeah, yeah, I think Bert Ward took all the pages with him when he <laughs> left. Yeah. Um, Improv. You know, Dick Cabot used to be a page in NBC, too. Oh, is he really? I've heard about those people, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, what about the improv stuff? You do a lot of improv thing. Where are you working currently? What are you doing on I'm in a group called Off the Wall. It's been at the Improv in Hollywood for... Oh, thank you. Uh, it's been at the Improv uh, in Hollywood for about eight years, and uh, the group itself has been together for, like, 13 years. Mm -hmm in other places. We work there every Monday night, and, uh, and that's a terrific group of people also. We do uh, everything on audience suggestions. Yeah. Explain how this works. The, the audience makes a suggestion. They throw out any absurd situation they want. Mm -hmm. Has it ever come to you where no idea was there? Where the audience was dead silent? No, where they had an idea, but nothing came to you. Ah, uh, that's all the time, but you see, there's six of us, so there's always somebody who has an idea. Yeah. And every once in a while, there's times when you vault onto the stage with absolutely nothing going for you and uh, just grab onto something, you know, yeah. open a refrigerator or something. Usually something happens. Yeah. You have to trust the other people you're working with to, to spark you. And, uh, and it well, usually an incredible works. thing to do. It, it, it seems to be real scary. I would well, it's great because so. you don't have to rehearse. Yeah. I mean, that's the best thing about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, what, okay, when you're all through with all this, Gary Shandling and improv, you go home, what's Paul Wilson do to relax, to take it easy? <laughs> I used to take off my clothes and watch TV. Yeah. But, um, uh, and my wife would fall asleep on the couch next to me, or she'd already be asleep. But we just got a dog, and uh, when I come home, I'm the new element in the house, and he oh. wakes up and wants to play. So now I 
play with the dog to relax. <laughs> Well, we'll bring uh, the chaplain out, and he can talk to you about that a little later. Maybe we'll work something out, okay? Would you be an S a cup, bite and sign a cup for us to put Why? on our cup wall of fame? Certainly, I will. Okay, well, that's wonderful. And here's the pin. All right, there's Paul Wilson on Camp Midnight. We'll be right back. night it's the place to be and thanks for being in that place wherever you are still to come tonight jory hussein from uh, head of the class also the group the broken homes will be singing for us right now though our next guest is the founder and president of fun fun products incorporated which manufactures this among all things and i'm not even sure what this does so um Maybe we better bring the lady out who knows more about it and uh, have her explain it herself. Please give a, a wonderful Camp Midnight Howdy High High to ooh, the Tupperware Lady of Sex, Freddie Wellman. How are you? Good to see you. Here we go with that little microphone here, because I want to hear every single word, so put that on there. All right. I don't want you to miss anything. And I see you brought a basket of goodies with you today. Um, well, what in the world is this? Uh, well, first, tell me about yeah, fun. Oh, can I? Oh, thank you. Uh, I can't for a moment, okay? <laughs> is there a car bumper handy? No, I just... Okay, yeah, we're fine. <sighs> F-U-N, what's it stand for? What's it mean? I know it says fun, but uh, what else? Yes, F-U-N stands for for us now for women only. Oh. We're a home party plan, as you said, very much like Tupperware, mm -hmm. uh, except uh, we have uh, no burping bowls. Mm -hmm. we, we, we do have some uh, rubber goods, but yeah. uh, <laughs> we also have uh, absolutely uh, beautiful, gorgeous lingerie okay. for men and women for all sizes. Really? Lingerie for men? Yes. Well, you have some. Oh, well, I guess this would be. Oh, yes. this is for a man? That's I'm for sorry. A man. <laughs> and uh, one size fits all. <laughs> How did the company get started? How did you get, uh, you were sitting around the house one night and you said what? Watching Tom Snyder yeah. on late night TV. <laughs> when I think of Tom Snyder, this comes to mind. Right? <laughs> no, really, what, what happened? Well, we're, we're all very thankful to Tom yeah. for uh, helping us uh, get the idea to start the company. Okay. Uh, and he had a guest on his show and she was selling adult toys door to door and uh, I thought it was a good idea and it was about time that women had the opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, check some of these things out. We left that up to you guys for years and uh, what do you know? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. aren't, you, aren't you glad that you don't have to worry about... Uh, I really am. I'm glad that, that we've got some, some, some visual aids to work yes, with now. Yes. Well, how does, how does the, uh, the typical party work? Do we need a helper from the audience to show oh, some things? Oh, at least huh? one, yes. All right. Come up, ma'am. Yes, have a chair. There she is. And, uh, say, why don't we set that, uh, the basket up here, and uh, that'll give plenty of room. Okay, she okay, all right? Fine. And what's your name? Julie Cates. Julie, all right, we're not responsible for anything that's going to happen to you here. But, uh, Hi, Julie. Hi. Have yeah. you ever been to a fun party? No, I haven't. You ever heard about them? Or? Yes, I did. Okay, well, one, one thing you may have heard about is one of our most wonderful lotions, and it's called Fireworks. Have you ever heard of Fireworks? No, I haven't. Ooh, some people out there in the audience have heard about it. It's the one that gets warm when you rub it and gets hot when you blow on it and you can put it anywhere you want calm down <laughs> and uh, it's a wonderful uh, massage lotion that if you breathe on it lightly well let me show you what happens okay okay you might want to try a sensitive area of the body <laughs> you guys have dirty minds the wrist the wrist all of our products is concentrated so a little bit goes a long way and you rub it in, or if you're very fortunate, someone will do that for you. <laughs> and is when you it, breathe on it... Is it warm yet? Is it, warm? Is it, yes, is it yes. hot yet? Is it, is it hot yet? When she blows on it. Okay, now it? taste it. Oh. Mm -mm. What's it taste like? It's really sweet. Very sweet. Taste Ooh. again. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's see. What else is in this thing? Ooh. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. All right, well, here, pull out a couple other things there real pull quick. Pull out a couple other Get things. some of the bigger things. <laughs> well, speaking of bigger, what this is, is another mm -hmm. jock sock. Yes. And this is for the man who always is sure that he oh. me measures up. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. Well, there's a lot of great things. How can people get involved in these parties? I mean, uh, where can they get in touch with you? Well, we are in Garden Grove, California. Mm -hmm. We have representatives all over the United States. All right. Uh, we have a toll-free number. Can mm -hmm. I let the folks know? Please do that, yes. 1-800-621-4841. All right. Our parties are for ladies only. Wonderful. Fun parties. And ladies, have one so you can find out what the heck this does. Okay, <laughs> this thing right here? Thank you very much. Freddie Woolman. All right. Thank you for being on Camp Midnight. Thank you. There you go. All right. We'll check back with Debbie and Buff and find out how our little Cupid connection is coming in just a moment. I'm Dick Wilson, your host for the evening and for a few more evenings until I take my name off the parking spot somewhere out here. Uh, we've had a, such a romantic thing going on. I'm very excited to find out what's going on. Scooter, if you could help us out a little bit here on our Cupid Connection, some of that wonderful romantic music that you have for us. Uh, if you just joined us, where the heck were you? Okay. Um, early in the show, we put together a couple and sent them out on a romantic evening as far as our Cupid connection and Bup and Debbie. And we have checked in with them. Let's find out exactly how things went and invite our lovely Debbie back out to find out how the date went. Debbie, come on. All right, Debbie. Good. You look like you're very happy and nice. Let me just help you here. I always enjoy doing this. And remember, if you blow on this, it'll get hot, okay? Yeah. Oh, my God. Try yelling that out of a car window sometime. Yeah, blow on this. Okay. Um, let's get down to brass tacks. You, Debbie, Bub, romance is in the air. No. You leave. Well, just a minute now. Okay. You leave the building. Just, you you get into the limo. Tell me about it. What happened? Well, all he talked about was himself. No, and he's kind of a jerk. Well, wait a minute. Well, let, all right. Well, let's. Uh, Let's hear from Bob just a moment and find out exactly what uh, what his side of this story is. Now, you feel like he was definitely a jerk. Well, kind of. Yeah. All right. Uh, are we hooked up? Can we take a look at Bob and find out exactly what, what, what his part is? Sure. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bob, your feelings, please. Uh, well, I, I, I really had a wonderful time, um, Dick. I had a great time. She's a dynamite lady, oh. I got to tell you. I had a wonderful time. All right. Thank you, Bob. Um, Debbie, at dinner, how was it? Romantic, candlelight, your feelings? Well, there's like these little toys and the drinks and he kept playing with them and throwing cards all over the place. And <laughs> That's right, it was great. Huh? <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> had a great time. Okay, all right, Bob. Uh, how about the limo ride back here to the Camp Midnight Studios? <laughs> well, he's kind of a geek. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I, well, I, I'm, I'm, I don't understand. What, what is there? Because um, I, I really like you a lot. I mean, I don't, what do you mean I'm a geek? What, I uh, what, well, what, I'll tell you what, what Debbie. Uh, let me just help you out here for just a moment. Because, as it. you know, our Camp Midnight audience chose this you couple, Debbie and uh, Bob, to go out to, uh, to a date together. Now, I will pay again for another date. All expenses paid on Camp Midnight if you'll go out with Buff one more time. What do you say? Yeah. No. Yeah. What? No. No, what do you mean, no? I'm, wait, what do you mean, no? Oh, wait, all right, do you have, uh, like, what about your mom? Will your mom go out with me or anything, or you? All right, okay. sister. I tell you what, Debbie. I'm I gonna, can't believe me, it. I mean, that's really not. not I don't understand, you know. Yeah, somebody help up. Let me <laughs> salvage you from this, Debbie. Good luck. You're on your way. You're a free woman again. And please accept a USA beach towel from us for your troubles. All right. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Cupid arrow shot and landed someplace on the back wall on that one. But thank you and good luck to you as Valentine's Day comes around the corner. Our next guest portrays the good-natured transfer student from India on the ABC TV hit series Head of the Class. And we all watch that. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm Camp Midnight welcome for Jory Hussein. <laughs> Flip 
that right on there and pull up right. pull up a bench, Jerry. Right. Let's do that. How are you? Well, it's it's good to be here. Oh, I good. feel like the happiest girl in the world right now. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Did you get any of the sex stuff when that lady left a while ago? Did she give you anything? No, but I did get her telephone number, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, well, how about Debbie? You want her? <laughs> Deb, where is she? Well, she just left our, oh, our Cuban okay. I guess that's out. The third season. You're in your third season of the show. Yeah, Are you yeah. still having a good time? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Head of the class. Uh, yeah, yeah, still having a very good time on the show. My character's evolving, changing a little bit. Uh, the first year on the show, I had a very thick Indian accent, yeah. and uh, this year my accent is pretty much gone, and uh, I'm dressing a lot better. No more polyester pants. Yeah. I don't know. It begins to, <laughs> begins to itch after a while. You know. Pronounce the name of the character for me. Jawaharlal. Jawaharlal. As, as in Jawaharlal Nehru, which is yeah. where I believe they got... Okay. You know. How did you, how did you uh, excuse away the fact of the change of the, uh, of the well, character? Well, well, just the idea that um, uh, most foreigners who, who come to another country after a while uh, tend to lose their accent and yeah. become more a uh, part of uh, the society norm so to speak. Of course, we don't believe in that. Well, no, and that's no, why no, we're no. here. <laughs> you know, you spend a lot of time on the set with a lot of great uh, fellow actors and actresses. Is everything okay, smooth? Everybody like each other? Everything yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I think it's, it's gotten better this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm not one to say, oh, you know, it's, uh, we're like a family. Because I think, you know, each person only has one family. And that doesn't necessarily mean that things on the, sen on the set are not terrific because they are but um, you know it's work and we're there to work and uh, and we managed to have fun at the same time so it works out nicely you know you uh, when I received all the information on Jory to read before Jory was gonna come on there was like volumes and volumes of interviews have been done with you and teen magazine and Tiger yeah. Beat and say my gosh yeah. you're all over the place yeah yeah those are those are kind of fun to do uh, just in the sense that um, it gives you an opportunity to communicate with uh, um, an audience of my age, uh, which is the audience that uh, watches the show. Well, what do you want to do as you as you look down the road a ways? What what's what do you want to do? What what would be the ultimate situation for you? Um, let's see. Well, I'd like to get into writing, directing, and acting. Mm -hmm. um, that, that that kind of a thing. I'd like to. Uh, I read somewhere that you wanted to do that at as a young age and try to conquer this whole thing before. Right. Well. Yeah. Right. Well, that's m pretty much my objective is to yeah. do a film, act in it, direct in it, that kind of a thing. Yeah. And I decided I want to be. Well, I wanted to be an actor by the age of nine. And I generally have a tendency to caution people who are interested in acting at a later point in life because uh, you know 99 percent of the actors in Hollywood are not working, and it's a shame because there are many many talented people out there but it's a very tough industry so it has to be something that that you will die for or I would suggest mm -hmm. you refrain from doing so <laughs> <laughs> it's a little final I would say yeah, yeah yeah what do you do for fun what do you do when you're off the set at home what do you have around the house what would we find if we walked into your place uh, oh gee um, probably my my keyboard my piano I like to fool around with that All right. kind of a, a dilettante at that uh, I like to collect vintage movie posters. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. They're just kind of interesting, o older ones, because uh, I think Hollywood is missing a certain mystique that it used to have. Uh, the actors and actresses were sort of larger than life, and uh, th that mystique is kind of gone, and I, I miss that. I hope that's something that we can bring back uh, okay. eventually. Are they, are, but, uh, they, are they of a value of any kind? Are they expensive? No, 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 basically, kind of basically. Yeah. Well, I guess my primary interest right now is kind of exercising. Mm -hmm. and I, do, you, do you exercise? Do you, go, do you work out? I try to hang out with people that do. That do, yeah. so it rubs off yeah, on you. Yeah. I say, <laughs> there, there are like two or three women at the gym that I go to who use the Stairmaster. It like recreates oh, this yeah, sure. walking up the stairs. Yeah. And I say, they're like on this machine for two or three hours and, and just panting and sweating and panting and sweating and panting and sweating. And you know after an hour of all this panting and sweating I want to sit down and light up a cigarette you know? <laughs> it's, like, it's overwhelming to me. jury the difference in our ages I can no longer pant and sweat for an hour okay so you're gonna have to do it for me thanks for being on thank Camp you Midnight. it's a pleasure it's pleasure. great and I look forward I, I like to the show you. and I love the network well we'll watch you ABC's head of the class and please BNS bite and sign a cup for us for our oh, cup wall I, of fame I, I, before I, you leave. Yeah. there you go Jory Hussein, folks, we'll be back.
Friday night, Camp Midnight. You're there. We're here on the USA Network. And hi, who are you? Lori Caswell. How are, where are you from, Lori? From Tonga. All right. Do you like uh, this group coming up here? These huh? kids are great. They've got a hit on their hands. All right, yeah. good. Well, we're glad to have them with us. Fortunate to have our next guest with us singing uh, their new single, Seeds I've Sown, from their new album, Straight Through Time. Here it is. Please welcome The Broken Homes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. With the Broken Homes, thank you very much. Seeds I've sown, the Broken Homes. Mike Doman, welcome to Camp Midnight. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm just fine. Boy, thanks for coming on the show. That's a great song. I like it. Take a moment here. Let's start over here and introduce the guys of the band. All the way up there at Scooter's keyboard. That's my friend Jim Swallop on the keys. All right. Yeah. This is uh, James Ashurst here on the bass. Okay. Over here we have the man with the snow white tan, Mr. Craig Ross. All right, Craig. Hey. Back on drums, Michael Graves. All right, Michael. God. Where'd the name The Broken Homes? Where'd you come up with that name? Well, we were going to call the band Dick Clark Productions, but that seemed to be taken. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's the only thing that was left. Where, how'd you guys all get together? How'd you, how'd you hook up? It wasn't Craig. Well, it was uh, basically through a lie, Dick. Um, yeah. I put an ad in the Recycler, which is the local classifieds. And, yeah. Uh, I claimed that I had management and a record contract. And uh, I, I got here. You fell for it? I fell for it. <laughs> All right. That was All right. Well, let's get, let's get out there and take care of picking up that album straight through time. All right? Straight line through time. Straight line on, through time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Straight line through time. I'll buy one and read it. Okay? Good. Thank you, guys, for being on Camp Midnight. We'll be back in a minute. Thank you. I want to show you one more time because I, I want these guys to like me when they leave, okay? Straight line through time. There you go. Get out. Get it. You'll love it. The Broken Homes, okay? Matter of fact, they just left Kansas City, Missouri, my hometown, in a concert earlier this evening. They're going up to Omaha, Nebraska to perform up there tomorrow night, so maybe you can catch them in Omaha. Hi, Omaha. Uh, here we've got, uh, thank, what a great show we've had. I had a good time, and thank you, Burt Ward, for coming by. We've got Lois Brumfield, who was in, Paul Wilson, Freddie Wellman, thank you. Jory Hussein, The Broken Homes, thank you, guys. Good luck on the road. Our regulars, Caroline Schlitt and Tony Forkish. Next week, listen to this show. We've got Dana Sparks from L.A. Law coming up. Comic Don Reed. We've also got Jason Hervey from The Wonder Years. Uh, Tom Sharp will be along. And Professor Robert Wilde and his Traveling Psychics Roadshow. Only here on this kind of stuff on Camp Midnight. We'll see you next week, okay?